over the past couple of years, I've become interested in the history of Auckland's music venues mainly, but the wider sort of uh, history of New Zealand music that you can find through looking at its venues over time. And that uh, brought me to some of the ones in the inner city. One venue that really stands out in the centre of Auckland, of course, is the Auckland Town Hall, built in 1911 as a civic building, so it's kind of a little more austere than some of the music venues of that time. But that also meant it's quite a good multi-purpose space where you can have seated shows or you can have standing shows. In those early years, in the 1910s, it would have been like orchestras, jazz maybe, um, sing-alongs, those sort of events. But over time, it's had a huge range of different types of music, um, including in 1964 when the Beatles played here. These days, the town hall is as vibrant as ever because it is so multi-use and it has been great to see New Zealand Axe getting big enough to headline there. It also has some smaller rooms inside so it can be used as multi-purpose venues like Flying Nun recently used it and they had multiple stages within the same venue. It's a really great multi-purpose venue. The Civic was built in 1929 uh, so it really came in that sort of roaring 20s era. It was quite an ostentatious idea to build it though because Auckland only had 200,000 people at that time and the venue has 2,750 seats so it was really over the top and within 10 years the owner had actually gone bankrupt because it was such a crazy build for that time. The Civics continued to be an amazing venue since then. It came back in the 60s and the Rolling Stones played there. More recently you've had acts like Rufus Wainwright, Nick Cave, and locals like Aldos Harding have played there as well. Definitely one of the more beautiful venues in the city and still amazing to this day. This is the last of the four venues that are covering my Heritage NZ article, known as the Bluestone Store, from when it was first built in 1861 as just a storeroom for trading uh, goods and so forth. It didn't really become a music venue until the 1960s when it was held clubs like the Top 20 Club where the bands would play the songs from the Top 20. I think it's great that these heritage listed buildings are still used quite a lot. They hold such a great vibrant sort of history of our musical scene over time.